Hello everybody, I am Jim Roberts. Uh, you guys know me from being on this committee. You know me from Bunker Labs with Nick. I thank all of you who attended our Bunker Labs event last night. It was a late night, so I'm happy to see you this morning. Thank you very much for making the effort. Um, I'm also the kind of the startup guy in the Wilmington market, and um, Polly is one of our entrepreneurs from Wilmington. I'd like to share a little story since we have some extra time today, very short, about how all this works. Uh, Polly came to one of my events in Wilmington. She came up, she was very frustrated. She had been working on her project, her product for five years in Wilmington and really hadn't gotten a lot of um, uh, momentum from nurturing from the community. The ecosystem was not yet really built, I would say. Um, oddly enough, I invited my friend Preston Lynn to come and speak at one of my events in Wilmington. And I introduced Polly to Preston, who took, Preston then took her to the UNC Sleep Center because she has a sleep-related product. That validated, um, the UNC program validated uh, how good her technology was or the need for that technology. And I made some additional um, introductions from that validation. I am not a scientist. As you guys know, I'm really nothing more than a connector. I just happen to know everyone, and I'm willing to do connections that way. Um, through one of those connections, uh, Polly found an investor, uh, a six-figure check that she has been working through since then. Uh, Polly has significant uh, background. She worked for the Stanford University Sleep Center. Uh, she worked for a CRO out in Wilmington and now she is an entrepreneur. So I would love to introduce and please give a, a warm welcome from Wilmington, my friend Polly Harmon. Thank you for that, Jim. There, and tell me if you cannot, if, raise your hand if you can't hear me. That would be okay. hard. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Raise your hand. So, So, as Jim said, I'm from Wilmington. My name is Polly Harmon, and I'm the CEO and founder of Pursuit Sleep Technology. And hopefully by the time you leave today, you'll be very excited about possibilities of improving your sleep. So I've been involved with sleep disorder research for about 20 years. And um, I've come across many people with sleep disorders and seen the effects that it has on the families and their life quality. If you don't get enough sleep, you don't function properly. We all know that. And sleep has become so much more important than it used to be because of awareness. So I'm going to describe a little bit today about what sleep is. Considering we sleep a third of our lives, that's quite a few years total, many of us don't know what happens. We think it's just some random event that occurs, but it's very predictable and very organized. So if I could have just a raise of hands, does this look familiar to anybody? Does anybody in here know someone who snores? Okay, well, we're equal opportunities. <laughs> a lot of women think that, you know, they don't snore and they're not going to own up to it, but they do. So how many people know what this is? And how many people know someone who uses one? All right, we're off to a good start. How many people have driven drowsy or know someone who's had an accident because they've fallen asleep? And how about jet lag? You get tired when you travel? Are you always struggling to catch up with your sleep? And I have some tips for you. So before I go into the products that we have, the four devices, it's important to understand what happens during sleep. So we have five stages of sleep, and if you have good sleep hygiene, you're going to go through that five times a night. So your first cycle, when you first go to bed, you're going to go into stage one. That's where your heart rate starts to go down, your respiratory rate goes down, and you start relaxing. So then you'll go into stage two. Stage two is where we spend most of our sleep. Then you'll go into a deep sleep, three and four. Three and four is a very deep sleep. That's where your brain activity is the least that it's going to be during your sleep process. 
so your brain's getting a chance to decompress. So stage three and four is really important, and we're finding out how important that is in terms of related to disease management. So then you'll go into stage five, which is REM. Everybody hears about REM. We know something about it. We know that it's important, but it's more important than you would think. The brain activity is the highest that it's gonna be during your sleep process. Unlike three and four in stage REM, your brain is almost awake. So a lot of people think that they're, when they go into REM, they're in a deep sleep and they're dreaming. You are dreaming, but your brain activity is the highest that it's gonna be. So under, to understand our products, it's important to understand what happens during REM. So because your brain activity is so high and your dreaming is very vivid, the paralysis occurs from about your neck down. And that prevents you from acting out those dreams. So when that paralysis occurs, tissue in your throat, neck area will relax. And if you're on your back, it can occlude your airway or partially occlude it. So when that happens, you'll start snoring. If it happens to a significant degree, you won't be able to get air past, so you'll have apnea. So what a CPAP does is it's a mask that goes over your face and just blows air the whole time. So it just blows all that tissue open so it doesn't close. So that's the premise of the CPAP. So your first stage of REM may only be about 15, 20 minutes. Then you'll go out of that, you'll go back into two, three, four, back into REM and so forth. You'll have about five of those events through the night if you have good sleep hygiene. By the time you get to your fifth cycle of REM, your REM cycle is one to two hours. So that's why you have a tendency to remember your dreams so vividly is because most of us, if you have good sleep, you're gonna wake up in REM and you have that dream right at the tip of your tongue because you were just there. And your brain activity is so high, you're almost awake and that creates that memory. <clears throat> so, the four products that we address, we address our products in these four uh, modes. We treat snoring, sleep apnea, drowsiness, and we wake you up at optimal times. So as you can see, and we all know that sleep is a $32.4 billion market and growing every year. So for snoring, what we do is we have a nano sensor that goes on your throat in this area here. It has a microphone and an accelerometer and it detects when snoring starts. It detects a vibration. As soon as that vibration occurs, you're gonna get a beep in an earbud that you're using. You're going to put an earbud in that works wirelessly with this sensor. That's all there is to the, to the device. It's a wireless sensor. You tape it on your neck. It's an adhesive. And then you put the earbud in. As soon as you get that beep, it beeps you to turn over and stop snoring. If you don't turn over, the beep will increase in volume until you do turn over. Nobody else hears this. So you're in control of your sleep. No one hears it your spouse, your partner is not gonna be interrupted through the night. It doesn't pick up any ambient noise and it doesn't pick up your partner snoring. Unlike some products on the market that listen to ambient noises, if your partner's snoring, they're gonna vibrate you. So this is very independent. So with sleep apnea, as we mentioned, that tissue is even heavier and it occludes your airway. So when that happens, you're, you're gonna get a beep and it's gonna continue until you roll over and restore your air and restore your breathing. So apnea is going to be maintained. This is a great product for mild to moderate sleep apnea. There's still a demand for CPAP for severe sleep apnea, but for the majority of people diagnosed with sleep apnea, 80 to 90% can be treated with this product because it's positional. We know that from years of research, we just need to get you turned over. So other than having a catapult on your bed and throwing it up, this seems to be one of the a viable solutions. So in REM, we have a sensor that goes under your eyebrow and it goes on your eyelid and it monitors eye movement, eyeball movement. And so there's a phenomenon that happens during REM and it's rapid eye movement phasic burst of your eyeball and it only happens during REM. It's very, uh, it's very predictable. We know
know the facets of it, but it's the only time it's going to happen. So there are no products currently on the market that can tell you for certain that you're in RAM. There are a lot of companies like Fitbit, Apple, different <coughs> devices that will, they <coughs> deduce that you're in RAM by your heart rate, your breathing, other physiological parameters, but they don't know that you're in RAM exactly. Knowing that is extremely important if we want to wake you up in REM. Because your brain activity is so high, if we wake you up in REM, you're going to wake up every morning just bouncing, you're going to be running down the road, I mean, you just have so much energy. Sometimes you wake up and you go, wow, I really slept good last night, I feel great. It probably had nothing to do with your sleep quality, but it had to do with when you woke up. So we can predict the exact two minutes of when we need to wake you up for optimal acuity. And that's pretty cool because it hasn't been done before in a home setting. It's only been possible in a sleep setting. So we can, we can tap into this eye movement. We can wake you up. So for example, that jet lag that you might have when you're traveling, it's not how much sleep you get, although you can't deprive yourself for very long. It's again, when you wake up. So if you're in a different time zone, you've gotten two hours of sleep. If we wake you up in REM, you're gonna, your brain is going to function just like you did if you were at home and you woke up optimally. So it's gonna decrease that jet lag significantly. You're gonna wake up and you're gonna feel more productive and much more capable of going through the day in that time zone. So a biggie for many of us who travel in cars and planes and trains, um, when we fall asleep at the wheel, that's incredible and not good, but when a pilot falls asleep at the helm, that's really bad. And when train operators fall asleep, we've all seen the results of that in, like, in recent news. So we have to find a way to monitor drowsiness before an event happens, and we can do that. So we have a sensor that goes on the outside of your eye, and it monitors where your eyelids come together, and it monitors frequency of blinks. So we know that when there's a change in your blink frequency, there's an initial surge when you become drowsy, and then there's a decrease in your frequency of blinks, we know you're getting drowsy. So we can alert you. But with this device, we can also alert someone else. So if you have a teenager who's driving back and forth from college and falls asleep at the wheel, you can program this to pick up the sensor on your cell phone, your smartphone. And if they're starting to get drowsy, you can call them up and say, get off the road. There's a B2B concept for truck drivers, for engineers, for train engineers, for pilots, for air traffic controllers. When you become drowsy, this signal goes to a home office and they can call and intervene long before there's an accident. So we shouldn't have any more of the Exxon Valdez disasters. That was because someone went to sleep. The Bhopal incident in India, that was because people went to sleep. Those were disasters that could have been avoided and can be now. This technology is going to change the way we sleep, the way we function, and change our mental acuity throughout the day. So this is our prototype that we have currently. And this first image here shows the sensor and the earbud, and the case that it goes in is also a charger. The sensor here, as you can see, there's a microphone, an accelerometer, and we also have an oximeter. So if someone is a snoring person, and during their snoring episodes, or if they stop breathing during an apneic event, we're gonna take an image of what their oxygen concentration is at that time. So we're gonna be able to monitor that, and they can look at that the next day. This is gonna empower a lot of people that wonder, am I, do I have sleep apnea? Does my husband, does my wife have sleep apnea? And they stop breathing. Well, now there's a, a way to see and to see how severe it is. It may not be bad at all. You may stop for only a couple of seconds and then start up. So all that anxiety about, I have sleep apnea, may, may not be that bad, but you power, you know, knowledge is power. So we want people to be able to understand that. Originally, this was not gonna go on the snore device, only on the apnea device, but everyone who has apnea snores. It's not that everyone snores has apnea but we can reach a lot of people with the snore device that never knew they had apnea. They can start looking at their progress each day, their data. So the case on the top will store the sensor 
and the earbud, and they're in, in a charging mode when they're in there. The lights on the bottom, it's a USB charging port, and the lights show when the, the unit is charging. One of the lights is for the sensor, the other light is for the earbud, and it indicates when they're fully charged. So these are the sensors that will be in our final products. The sensor that you just saw obviously can't go over your eye or on the side of your eye without it being encumbering. So as you can see, these are very ultra thin. You peel them off and they're gone. It's like a temporary tattoo. You put it on the next day when you get up, you want to leave it, you just wipe it off and it's gone. So that's where we will go in about two years for the other sleep recognition. So Jim said, okay, let's come up with a value proposition. It's like, okay, what exactly is a value proposition? So what my motto has been since early conception was, we're gonna do for sleep what the contact lens did for vision with simplicity and elegance. You're gonna be able to monitor your sleep <clears throat> by putting in a contact. You put this on, put your earbud in, and you monitor it. You become empowered to your sleep and every aspect of your life is going to improve because you're sleeping. It's invaluable. And the comorbidity of sleep deprivation and sleep apnea is so high. So many diseases can be averted if you sleep. So we have, this is gonna be over the counter. You don't have to get a reference from your physician. You don't have to have a prescription. You don't have to go through third party payers. You can go online and buy it. The one with sleep apnea, the, the way that, because of the way that it picks up sleep apnea, we will have it over the counter, uh, but it will have to go through a, an FDA process. Not a stringent one, a modified one. All of the other products are not FDA required. So here are some of the features that we talked about. Um, it's small, it's personal, um, you reuse it. The first generation will be reusable. Further down the line, everything will be disposable except the earbud. It's wireless, requires no Wi-Fi. You can travel, you can camp out with it. All of your camp mates now won't have to listen to you snoring. People who travel with you won't be offended by you. Um, it's portable, it requires no beds, no pillows. You don't have to have a bed either. You can sleep in a hammock. You can sleep anywhere you want and it's gonna go with you. That's about it. So I guess this is where we have questions. Go to the next slide. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> if anyone would like to get in touch with me, these are the ways that you can do so. So one okay. thing that we really like is if you could say these are three areas of my business where I need some help from maybe the people in the audience or the people that they know. Okay. Well, capital is always uh, one of the top things that we need as, as we are developing. I bootstrapped this company for the first three years personally, and as Jim mentioned, I I had a had an investor in 2016 who has taken us quite a quite a ways. But now we're looking for more investors, so that's one thing. Um, one of the very specific things is I'm looking for um, several different types of engineering that can do fabrication. I have engineering companies that are doing some work for me, but I need specific fabrication. I haven't found anybody yet. So anyone that knows that specialty. Can you speak to what type of fabrication? I mean, are there specific it, it's, issues um, that you're looking at to solve? It's materials and, and uh, designs for the earbud to progress the earbud a little further, mm -hmm. um, making it softer, more comfortable, someone who has experience in, in that type of textile. Any other help you are looking for? That's it. Okay. That's the thing. So I went through the clinical trials. Uh, as my son threw me <clears throat> under the bus, he admitted that I was a snorer. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm very proud of the progress that Polly has made in the, in the time that we've known each other. So other questions from the audience? Bill? You may have just answered it, but have you gone through the proof of concept phase? Of yes. This works? Yes. <clears throat> prototype? We are in, what, yes. What are you trying to do next with the money? I guess, what trying to We're get refining it. the product to do the final testing and then bring it to market. 
but the proof of concept, all of that was completed and Jim participated in that. Casey? So you mentioned that you had, that the struggle you're having with the engineering side is on the earbud side. And there are companies like Bose who just put out sleeping earbuds that are taking care of that piece. Is there a way to have the part of the product that you do be the patches, the other pieces that integrate with some of those other systems that are out there? I use sleep apps on my watch already. I use Bose headphones already when I sleep at night so that I can get rid of the noise around me. I do all these things already to replace those or to integrate with those would be more valuable to me. I've been involved with Hush, which was before Bose. Um, they were Hush Sleep Buds, and they launched on Kickstarter. It was a great Kickstarter campaign. They raised a lot of money and they got these units out, but they were flawed significantly. The time period that they were supposed to last didn't, didn't work. Most people would get a max of four hours, and they were supposed to last six to eight. So they had a lot of problems, and they finally had to pull them off the market. And Bose stepped in and um, purchased them, and then they they developed the earbud that they currently have, which is phenomenal. I have talked with them about the uh, sharing of that style, and uh, some of the parts of it is it's not proprietary. So it's kind of a two-part thing. If you if you bring someone in, then you have to share that information. And we're at a point right now where we're not there. Or is it a broadcasting from your piece? That's what I'm thinking. Is the broadcast right, there right, that right. Bose could just pick up that's within their Bluetooth setup that's already there that we we, is, is just there? Yeah, we don't have that capability. With HIPAA, um, I don't know if they would have the same safeguards for that because we're transmitting Bluetooth and we're also storing in a cloud base. Sure. Yeah. Are there any questions? Yes, sir. Um, one thing that comes to mind, if you're trying to solve these various sleep issues, one of the things that hey, people... Bob, would you mind standing? All right, no problem. Here? So, you know, in kid, one of the only things I remember from chemistry that I almost failed was that the equation needs to balance, right? So one of the things that we tend to do as human beings is we're going to gravitate towards something easy. I'm going to caffeinate myself, or I'm going to go for one of the 15 energy drinks that are marketed to, hold, to kingdom come in my face all the time. How are you going to help get on the other side of that and say, you know what, this is actually a much healthier alternative to solve the problem you were seeking to solve and keep myself focused so I can get my work done or I can drive to wherever, you know, because it seems to me that's the crutch a lot of us will gravitate toward instead of fixing the problem in a fundamental way. So how do you think that your marketing dollars may be able to compete with, you know, Five Hour Energy and Red Bull and Monster, whoever else? Right, and that's a billion dollar industry. <laughs> yeah. um, it's a process of awareness and education, and that's part, that's part of our campaign. It's going to have to be a dissemination of information, and people will gravitate toward healthier once they know that it's there. It is, it, it is something that we have considered in the marketing campaign and how we're going to go about getting that message out. And I think we have a couple of avenues as far as educational videos, um, YouTube. There's a myriad of ways, but it is, it's going to be about education. <coughs> um, I saw a gentleman on one of the talk shows, and he had a Fitbit, and um, he was an entertainer, and he was talking about rim recognition. And the host was like, what do, you, what do you want to do that for? And she said, oh, man, if, you know, it can wake you up at that perfect spot. You're going to have all this energy. And so they were like, well, how does that work? And he said, well, it only works sometimes. <laughs> because they're extrapolating data. They're saying, OK, when well, your heart rate goes up, your temperature goes up, your respiratory rate goes up, you must be in REM. So they're going to wake you up. It's not just about being in REM. You have a short window, about two minutes in each REM cycle that you can somebody out to obtain the maximum acuity. So if you're just extrapolating data, you're probably not going to hit it that often. So that's why it doesn't work as frequently as it is. So maybe that, maybe that's your marketing slogan. you got to bring that two-minute, like the two-minute manager or whatever that was, you know, the four-minute manager. That that actually is the, the, what I put my, put my finger on. Thank you. There's a question back here. I don't 
everyone. Um, I love the concept of this idea, and I would say personally, what what it's um, fun. What I want to buy here is the ability to wake up fresh every morning because it happens to everyone. Sometimes we wake up and like feel fresh, and I don't know why. It's 7 a.m. I like why I don't know. And so if you can eat on the spot all the time, that would be amazing. But my question is, how much? do you think it will cost as a final product? Between $150 and $200 is the average. <coughs> and in terms of production for you, does that cover everything? Or because I'm sorry, does it cover everything? Yeah, your cost. Your cost oh, yes, yes. Uh, the margin's pretty good on that. There's a question right here. Hi, so I'm Matt, by the way. I'm Matt. I enjoyed your, your talk. I'm, Thank you. I've struggled with sleep for a long time. Uh, but I have a method that I'd like to hear you comment on versus your REM and how you get this two minute window thing. My method is I go to bed on time and I just wake up when I wake up. I don't set an alarm. And I always feel great when I wake up. I, I have a CPAP too, you know, for <coughs> full disclosure. But, but it seems to me if you go to bed on time, you don't need this REM jazz. So yeah. you can explain that. That's not, I mean, I, I go to bed very early and I wake up at four o'clock in the morning and I, it doesn't matter what time I go to bed. I wake up at 4 a.m. That's why I'm so grumpy. But <laughs> I mean, that's it's not, it's, it's, that's not, that doesn't work for me. I mean, it may work for you, but it doesn't work for me. It doesn't matter what time I go to bed, I wake up at 4. I wake up with damn Mike Golick's son on ESPN radio, and I listen to that to help me maybe fall back to sleep for the nonsense. But um, did you have a better, more scientific answer than well, that? Well, I think the body is so amazing, our physiology. It, it has the programmability in it to wake up exactly at that right time. It takes discipline, it takes um, sleep hygiene, and it takes someone working toward that, but absolutely, you can do it independently of anything that can happen. But for example, with the, um, the sleep apnea and the snoring, one question I get a lot is, if that beeping is going on, aren't you waking the person up? And if you're waking them up, how are you improving their sleep? What occurs really quickly, because this is a wonderful physiology that we have, is often conditioning occurs very quickly. Within the first, within the first night, the, the subjects that I had that got the beep in their ear, they would turn over and they would tell me during the interview the next morning, they were almost going to roll back on their back and they remembered they were going to get the beep, so they stayed on their side. And that was in the first night. So often conditioning occurs quickly, so you get fewer and fewer beats as you use it. Some people can learn to sleep on their side so they wouldn't need it. But because we're creatures of habit, we would slide back into that snoring mode. And when I had people in the sleep lab years ago, before we had anything miraculous like wireless technology, all of these devices <coughs> were impossible. You would, be, you would be so encumbered by sleep with wires, with noise, so now with this technology, it's so small, miniature, Bluetooth, wireless, all of these things have made this possible. So you can learn to sleep on your side for, for ma maximum breathing, for, to decrease snoring, to breathe better if you have sleep apnea. And it is a learned thing. So theoretically, you could teach yourself and not use the device anymore. But that's not been what I see. People will go back to the same sleeping habits they had before there's a question over here. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, John. Uh, excellent insights as to fundamental technology. Uh, when can we uh, test drive this? <laughs> and, 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 and is there uh, like a business model? You say $150 price point. It, it, do you have some kind of early adopter where you pay $150? Okay, the earbuds might not last, uh, all, all things. But we, we sort of get free replacements until you've ramped up, you know, and then, and then, and then of course there would be some ongoing revenue stream from uh, disposables and so on. And then, as an early customer, we can then become an ongoing customer, essentially paying retail uh, for this. Those are called buying signals, right there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that concept, and I have not. Uh, I have not. Yeah, like a beta customer. Yeah. 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 And then, uh, and then you don't specify any warranties. Use them as my testing. And you, it, it's very clear you're using it, you're testing, but there are people who, well, some people are willing to, you know, pay 150 bucks, good. 
uh, oh, this doesn't work. Okay, we can send it back and get a replacement. And then it helps you get the kinks and out. And limiting their expectations as they go through the process yes, to yeah, get condition. feedback to improve on it. Right. It's a great idea. And people I, would, I, be I like to pay I would be willing to pay 100 I would be willing to pay 100 You want to say, actually, you'll have almost every person in this room sign up right now. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you, and most of the times when I've done presentations, people come to me and they give me their phone number. They give me their email address. They yeah. say, as soon as these products are on the market, please, please, on your website, have a link. Meet me when it's ready. So I know that there is a tremendous demand. And these products would have been here sooner, but as you all know, capital is not the easiest thing. And it's especially not easy for women. And we all know the statistics about female entrepreneurs getting funded. It's a reality. Um, I've had people in meetings say, if you get a male CEO, we'll invest in your company. That's, those were things actually said to me in 2015. This is, this is where women still are. Question over here. Yes. Oh, yeah. All right. yes. uh, question about the disposables. Those look amazing and very futuristic. Yeah. Um, yes. What's the price point on those and the kind of recurring revenue there? We don't know what the price point is going to be, but it's, it's going to be pennies uh, for the refillable. The technology that's going to be used is, is um, uh, reproducible, reproducible sensors on a mass scale. So it'll be like a Band-Aid. You buy a box of 30 for two bucks, three bucks. Or you get into a system where you, you have monthly refills. More questions? Yeah, my background way back is in neuropharmacology and physiological psychology. So I did a lot of sleep studies 100 years ago. There, And you're right, we are creatures of habit. A lot of things that, that you didn't mention today depends upon our environment where we're at. If you go to sleep in one bed one day, but you're sleeping in somebody else's bed the next day and sleep comfortable, it might that might be a problem and, and how do your your project products work there. Secondly, related to that, um, a lot of people take sleep aids, Ambien or melatonin, something like that. And again, have you tested to see uh, the interaction of what you're doing um, with, with those type of things? And then, thirdly, um, what happens, you know, we all get addicted to things. If we get addicted to your product and use it and start using it, we go on a trip and we run out of you know, your sensors or something like that, what, what is going to be the consequence of, of having to change that? What we have then a week of really crappy sleep because we're, we're out of the sensors. And, you know, we, we, you know. I think the best thing is going to remind you not to forget it the next time. <laughs> 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 your spouse is going to carry it for you. <laughs> There, we really, I don't think there's a huge um, expense that you're going to pay if you get good sleep one night and you've gotten it for a year and then one night you don't get good sleep. Other than feeling crappy, like you said, I don't think the ramifications are going to be that great. We haven't done any long-term studies. I did studies with a certain sleep product that's on the market, which is horrendous, but everybody uses it. Um, it affects all sleep stages, so REM is almost non-existent with a lot of sleep with a lot of sleep aids, you, you completely annihilate the ground. If you use them frequently, it's, you know, you, 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 you can do extended damage to yourself, to your sleep, to your psyche, to your ability to be, um, to have maximum acuity. So with sleep aids, what I did find was I had to ring the bell, because that's what I used in the sleep lab. It was a buzzer kind of right by their ear. I would have to depress it longer for those on sleep medications. They did eventually wake up, <laughs> and they did turn over. <laughs> they were slower to do it. Yes. Uh, what's your What's your plan to get this introduced to the market and win, and eventually be able to sell millions of these per year? The plan is to partner with a company with that infrastructure in place. Cardinal Health. Yep. <laughs> Hadn't thought about Cardinal Health, but we were yeah. thinking Phillips, uh, ResMed. Have you approached them or any of them? I have. <laughs> what do they say? Uh, bring me the prototype and bring me what we need and then we'll talk. So we're, we're finished with the first phase and I need to do extended testing. You improve your value, as you all know, with the more testing you do and the more traction that you get with the product. So do we bring it to market and then make an exit or do we sell it to someone?
someone who is capable of doing it right on a mass level because keeping up with demand is going to be very difficult unless you have infrastructure in place to do this. I think also the beta testing, uh, as was mentioned before, right, you need data, you need data. And, yes. and that's something we can all help you with. Thank you. The beta. <laughs> okay, hold on. Uh, Kim and then Frank. Hi, good morning. Um, good morning. Great idea. Let me ask you a question. This is something that is um, addressing a medical issue. Um, have you approached the FDA? Is there some testing that you have to do to get approved before you put this onto market? The only what, what are your uh, approaches to this, those issues? The only one of the three products is the sleep apnea, and it will require a modified 510K. Because of the technology that we're using, there are certain provisions now that the FDA has, and they've, they've reduced that burden on companies and entrepreneurs with products that use Bluetooth and sensor technology. So there is an FDA requirement for the apnea. There were several products that have already been mentioned that sort of fit into the quantified self kind of uh, category of things in the world today. And I'm curious if you've looked at uh, any kind of marketing strategy that would uh, integrate the data that you're collecting into the various dashboards that people are already using, possibly even partnering with them to list your product as one of the things that somebody could buy to fill in that blank spot. And also, these people would probably be really good uh, beta testers as you're getting ready to go to market. Even prior to having that one piece that requires FDA approval, having the other product that's ready to go and people that are on the cutting edge of quantified self kind of things, testing, being able to talk with their followers about what they're doing with this and how it's impacting their sleep. Have you looked at that kind of strategy? I have not, but it's a, it's a great suggestion. We've thought about different platforms that we could um, piggyback with, but we've not gotten there yet. Anybody on that side? To be a blind ointment. Uh, you know, the, the problem if you're, if you're really sleep deprived is that sleep overtakes you like a seizure. You can be standing and talking and fall asleep. Okay? I'm, I'm a physician and I taught residents and medical students. I've literally had someone talking and doing a presentation and go over. Uh, so it would be hard for me to understand how a company put it on someone, they get the signal, uh, they call the truck driver uh, and say, hey, wake up, because the, the time difference would be too long. The second thing would be, wouldn't there be liability? If the truck company didn't have it set up correctly, and they received the signal, but were not able to respond appropriately, then they are liable for the truck drivers. Not that they aren't anyway, but perhaps even more liable. So there, I'm the fly annoyance. There are liabilities, and that, that's the issue with the device, and what I've been told is most of it depends on marketing and how you make your claims. It's like a fire alarm in your house. If the fire alarm goes off, that's not gonna that's not gonna save you. It's just letting you know that you're becoming your there's a there's a dangerous situation coming. With um, alerting people, there's quite a fast um, relay time. If someone gets two to three beats in a row, then that's when the signal is going to go for intervention. There are, you know, it depends on what the company would want to set up as far as um, their protocol for getting alerted. With those folks, when they get the beat, it's not to wake them up. This is long before they go to sleep. We're alerting them at the onset of drowsiness, not mid-cycle and not when your head nods. There are a lot of devices out there now that monitor when your head, when your chin hits your neck, you're already asleep. So we need to find, and we need to alert you long before that. So with the blink frequency, we can now tell you at the onset. So we have plenty of time to actually get the news up there. And it's not to wake you up, it's to get you to do something like get off the road. Or like an airline traffic controller. That's for their supervisor to come in and relieve them, get someone else in. So it's for preventive. And to your point about people falling over, we, I've used this with narcoleptics. And what we do is monitor the frequency, I mean the, uh, the eyeball movement. Because narcoleptics,
epilepsy, they go into REM immediately. So as soon as they have that phasic burst, we alert them. And so it can sometimes pull them out of that narcoleptic event. We haven't, we're not marketing that. That's not anything that we are addressing, but that's what I've done in research. So the other thing is, with the narcoleptic, if you send a really loud noise or start shaking or yelling at them, they're going to go right into REM. So the noise has to be very light and very soothing to keep them out of that narcoleptic event, keep their face from falling into food. Hey, there was, I saw another well, hand. Another Hi, my name is Andrew. I just have one quick question. Sure. I understand the benefits of waking during REM. But don't you run the risk of truncating some really fantastic dream? <laughs> you, you ultimately want to sleep through all of your dreams. But if you need to get up and you need to be awake for something, you want to wake up as fresh as you can. Okay. But you don't want to circumvent your dreams. Sleep on. Is, is the premise that REM always happens at the same time? What if I don't want to wake up during good REM at 4 o'clock in the morning? Well, you program it. You say, okay, okay I want it to wake me up at It learns seven. or you program it? You program it. Okay. You say, okay, I want to wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning. Okay. What we're going to do is track your, your REM cycles, mm -hmm. and as soon as you go into a REM cycle that's within 30 minutes of your window, okay. we're going to wake you up. So right. you may wake up a half an hour earlier, okay. but that's that right. small price. Right. Mr. Okay, Preston has a question. We have time probably for that question. And that's that. Preston? Yeah. I have Hi, a comment and a question. <laughs> Uh, so when I'm taught when I went to Wilmington to make this talk I was really surprised that a young attractive woman would come up to me and say I'm so excited to meet you <laughs> I mean that doesn't happen it happens well it doesn't ever happen <laughs> so what do you do what do you do about getting up two or three times a night to go to the bathroom it's not going to have an effect at all You're, I mean the, the signal is not going to be interrupted and it's going to go back to, as soon as you're back to sleep, it's going to be monitoring you. The accelerometer is going to know when you're moving. There's a, there's a vast difference between a snore and when you roll over or when there's body movement. So if there's body movement, you're not going to get an alarm while you're in the bathroom. When you go back to bed, it's going to pick up where it left off. So we have entrepreneurs. Besides that, um, Preston, you were kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> so we have entrepreneurs like Wilmington, uh, uh, like Polly in Wilmington. Our next event is July 26. We have Monica Wood from Mixed Recipes. We have Luke Marshall from Vital Flow, and we have um, Hunter Young from CED, who's their new person to connect entrepreneurs to investors. Um, so if you would like to attend July 26. Uh, four o'clock. We have all of our events at Ironclad Brewery, who just announced a new venture fund. Yes, a brewery that announces a venture fund. I am or Whale, my angel network is the betting source for the for the Ironclad venture. So, please come to our event July 26. It's a Thursday at four o'clock, which means you can make it a weekend and enjoy our fine city. <laughs> <laughs>